What is the last phase in the data security cycle? What role do security policies serve? Welcome to Certification Terminal, your ultimate destination for all certifications. We are thrilled to have you here. Today, we're diving into another video of ISC Square's Cutting Edge Cybersecurity Certification Practice Exam Series. At Certification Terminal, we're committed to being your ultimate certification Q&A hub. We're here to support you on every step of your certification journey. If you find value in our content, don't forget to show your support. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with anyone who could benefit from it. Now, let's get started on your path to becoming a certified cybersecurity pro. Question number one. What does the payment card industry data security standard, PCI DSS, primarily aim to achieve? Option A, to regulate the use of payment card information. Option B, to prevent fraud and theft in payment card transactions. Option C, to ensure the security of credit card information. Option D, to promote ethical behavior in payment card usage. The correct answer is. Option C, to ensure the security of credit card information. The Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, PCI DSS, stands as a set of requirements established to enhance the security of credit card transactions and the storage of related information. Its inception was primarily driven by the necessity to safeguard sensitive payment card data, aiming to mitigate the risks associated with fraud and theft. PCI DSS applies to any entity involved in handling payment card data, including merchants, financial institutions, payment processors, and service providers. Question number two. What role do security policies serve? Option A, to ensure compliance with legal and regulatory requirements. Option B, to implement technical controls for information security. Option C, to establish guidelines and requirements for secure practices. Option D, to respond to security incidents and breaches. The correct answer is. Option C, to establish guidelines and requirements for secure practices. Security policies serve as foundational documents that delineate the principles, practices, and protocols governing an organization's approach to safeguarding its information assets. These policies are crafted to create a structured framework that articulates the guidelines, requirements, and best practices essential for maintaining robust security measures within an organization. Question number three. What type of network attack entails pretending to be a genuine website in order to steal sensitive information from users? Option A, virus. Option B, worm. Option C, phishing. Option D, Trojan. The correct answer is. Option C, phishing. Phishing is a cybercrime tactic that involves fraudulent attempts to obtain sensitive information, such as usernames, passwords, credit card details, or other personal data, by disguising as a trustworthy entity. This is typically done via deceptive emails, messages, or websites that mimic legitimate sources. Phishing attacks aim to deceive users into revealing confidential information or tricking them into performing actions that compromise security. Option A, virus, is incorrect. A virus is a type of malware that attaches itself to a host file or program, often spreading when the infected file is executed or opened by a user. Viruses can replicate and spread within a system or across networks by attaching themselves to other files or programs. They can cause various harmful effects, such as corrupting or deleting files, disrupting system functionality, or allowing unauthorized access. Option B, worm, is incorrect. Worms are self-replicating malware that spread across networks by exploiting vulnerabilities in operating systems or software. They don't need user interaction to propagate and can replicate themselves independently. Worms spread rapidly, infecting multiple systems by exploiting security weaknesses. Their primary aim is to spread and cause damage by consuming network bandwidth or compromising systems. 
Option D, Trojan, is incorrect. A Trojan is a type of malicious software disguised as legitimate software. It tricks users into downloading or executing it by appearing harmless or useful. Once installed, it can perform various malicious activities such as stealing data, providing unauthorized access to a system or allowing other malware to enter the system. Unlike viruses or worms, Trojans do not replicate themselves. Please hit the like button. Question number 4. What is the most effective method to ensure that an organization's governance aligns with its security goals? Option A, provide security awareness training to all employees on the organization's governance and security policies and procedures. Option B, develop and implement a security policy that is aligned with the organization's governance framework. Option C, conduct regular security audits to identify and address any gaps between the organization's governance and security practices. Option D, all of the above. The correct answer is Option D, all of the above. By integrating security policies within the governance framework, providing ongoing training to employees, and conducting regular audits, an organization can effectively ensure alignment between its governance structure and security goals. Regular security audits help identify any discrepancies or gaps between the organization's governance principles and actual security practices. Educating all employees about the organization's governance structure and security policies is essential. Creating a security policy that directly integrates with the organization's governance framework is crucial. Question number 5. How do vulnerability assessments and penetration tests differ when it comes to access control? Option A, a penetration test's attempt to exploit vulnerabilities to gain access. Option B, vulnerability assessments are automated and do not exploit vulnerabilities. Option C, penetration tests are conducted by attackers and not authorized by the organization. Option D, vulnerability assessments are conducted by attackers to identify vulnerabilities. The correct answer is... Option A, a penetration test's attempt to exploit vulnerabilities to gain access. Penetration tests aim to simulate real-world attacks by attempting to exploit the identified vulnerabilities to gain unauthorized access or perform specific actions within the system. Vulnerability assessments concentrate on identifying weaknesses and security flaws within an organization's systems, networks, or applications. Question number 6. Which option exemplifies a detective control within incident response? Option A. Security awareness training. Option B. Firewall. Option C. Intrusion detection system. Option D. All of the above. The correct answer is. Option C. Intrusion detection system. An intrusion detection system is a security tool or software that monitors network or system activities for malicious activities or policy violations. It identifies potential security threats or breaches by analyzing network traffic or system events in real time or retrospectively. Option A, security awareness training, is incorrect. Security awareness training involves educating individuals within an organization about various security threats best practices, policies, and procedures to mitigate risks. Option B, firewall, is incorrect. A firewall is a network security device or software that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. Question number 7. Which security measure aims to restrict unauthorized access to a system or network by managing incoming and outgoing network traffic according to predefined security regulations? Option A, firewall. Option B, antivirus. Option C, access control. Option D, encryption. The correct answer is. Option A, firewall. A firewall is a security barrier that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. 
Option B, antivirus, is incorrect. Antivirus software is designed to detect, prevent, and remove malicious software, commonly known as viruses, worms, trojans, and other malware, from computer systems. Option C, access control, is incorrect. Access control mechanisms regulate who can access specific resources or perform certain actions within a system or network. Option D, encryption, is incorrect. Encryption is a method used to secure data by encoding it in such a way that only authorized parties can access and decipher the information. Question number 8. What steps are included in the creation of a business continuity plan? Option A, plan development, testing and maintenance, risk assessment, business impact analysis, strategy development. Option B, risk assessment, plan development, testing and maintenance, business impact analysis, strategy development. Option C, business impact analysis, strategy development, risk assessment, plan development, testing and maintenance. Option D, business impact analysis, risk assessment, strategy development, plan development, testing and maintenance. The correct answer is. Option D, business impact analysis, risk assessment, strategy development, plan development, testing and maintenance. The steps involved in developing a business continuity plan include business impact analysis, a risk assessment, strategy development, plan development, testing, and maintenance. Business impact analysis involves identifying critical business functions, processes, and systems. Risk assessment evaluates potential threats, vulnerabilities, and risks that could affect business operations. Strategy development involves outlining specific plans for different scenarios, including emergency response plans, recovery strategies, resource allocation, alternate work arrangements, and communication protocols. Plan development involves documenting procedures, roles, responsibilities, communication methods, backup processes, and recovery steps for each critical function or system. Testing validates the plan's effectiveness, while maintenance ensures its alignment with evolving business needs and risks. Please subscribe to our channel. Question number 9. What is the last phase in the data security cycle? Option A, destruction. Option B, archival. Option C, backup. Option D, encryption. The correct answer is. Option A, destruction. In the data security lifecycle model, the final stage involves data destruction, ensuring that data on a specific medium is erased beyond recovery. Archival involves establishing a lasting data archive for compliance, storage efficiency, or business insights. Backups are replicated data used for recovery facilitation. Encryption is the cryptographic scrambling of data to hide its original content and isn't considered a distinct phase in the data security lifecycle. Question number 10. Which access control measure aims more to deter potential attackers from attempting to breach a system rather than completely blocking their actions? Option A, deterrent access control. Option B, corrective access control. Option C, compensating access control. Option D, detective access control. The correct answer is. Option A, deterrent access control. Deterrent controls are meant to dissuade potential attackers or intruders from attempting to breach a system or engage in unauthorized activities. Option B, corrective access control, is incorrect. Corrective controls are implemented to rectify or mitigate the impact of security breaches or incidents after they have occurred. Option C, compensating access control, is incorrect. Compensating controls are put in place to mitigate risks when standard controls are insufficient or unable to adequately address specific security requirements. Option D, detective access control, is incorrect. Detective controls are designed to identify and detect security incidents or unauthorized activities in real time or retrospectively.
Thank you for joining us today at Certification Terminal. We hope you found this video helpful on your journey towards becoming a certified cybersecurity expert. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, please let us know in the comments below. Your feedback is invaluable to us. Remember to hit that like button if you found this video informative, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content on certification exam preparations. Share this video with your colleagues and friends who might benefit from it. Together, we can build a strong community of certified professionals. Stay tuned for more updates, and until next time, keep learning and excelling in your certification endeavors. See you in the next video.